Hey, hello everybody, welcome to this Ancestor Room. Today we are taking a look at uh, how to set up AUM to record into Cubasis. So uh, separate tracks, you know, per channel. So that you know from scratch how to do this, because it's a question I've been asked a few times in comments, you know, how do I get AUM to record into or the doors or whatever. So this you can apply the principles to this to 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 anything really. Okay, so first of all, let's we're gonna keep this really simple and straightforward. Okay, so it's not gonna be some huge session, it's not gonna go on for ages and ages. So first of all, we're gonna open let's open three audio tracks, okay? And in the first audio track here, we'll choose whatever instrument you want to use, but for the, the, the sake of this demo. I'll choose uh, Mood, which is the first thing there. Okay, and I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit there. And, and in this second one, we'll choose another one. I'll choose Synth Master Player. Okay. And I also want to turn the volume down a little bit. These are AUV3s, but you can also use Interapt. You know, it's fine. And then I want to choose a sound from Sounds of the World, and I'll use the first one that's in there. It's really purely for demonstration purposes, this. Okay, so we'll do this. And then I'm going to route my uh, mood synth to whatever MIDI controller you, 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 you're using. I'm using the Artoria key step, which is here. And there it is. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing for Synth Master Player. I'm going to route that to the Artoria key step too. So now the Artoria will be playing both of them. Okay, now in this third one, now th this could be, I'll give you a demonstration near the end of a session that, that's kind of set up so that you know. Um, you set up how many of these you want, so it might be a great big massive session you already have set up, etc, etc, but as long as your session is set up like this, it's, you know, you, you follow these. In this one, we want to go to Inter App Audio because Cubasis needs to go into the inter app audio slot there. And now what's happening is AUM is open in Cubasis. So if we do this, if we went to this now, we can open Cubasis and Cubasis will load and it'll be a project and it's a blank project. It's called AUM to Cubasis as I named it earlier. But as you can see, there's nothing there. So the first thing we want to do is while we're in Cubasis is add, okay? And we're going to add two audio tracks. That's all we're going to do. Okay, so hang on just a sec. So when we've added our two audio track, excuse me, when we've added our two audio tracks like this, we're going to open this like this, and we're going to go to routing, and we're going to choose where it says mono input. We're going to choose this, and where it says inter app, we're going to choose that the. And we're going to scroll all the way down our inter app list. Now, whatever you have as inter app will be here. So if you have AUM, um, it, it's going to be here. And since this is a tutorial for AUM, we go down and we find that we find we've got eight ports. So we can put eight separate channels into Cubasis. But like I said, we're going to choose port one. OK, and it will take us back to AUM. But let's go back to Cubasis before we finished. Now, you'll see that I've put that in the second track. I should have put it in this first one, but that's okay. Let's just hold on to this and we move that slot up. And this is only for ordering purposes, okay? It still worked exactly the same, but I want to keep everything sort of in line. Okay, so the same thing again. We go to mono, we input here, we choose inter app, and we open up down here. We look through until we find our uh, AUM. And there it is, Chromatica AUM. Now you'll see we've used port one, so we can't use it again. It's grayed out. So you want to choose port two. And again, that will take us back. So now in Cubasis, we have port one, port two, into app, audio from the routing. Okay. Now to get back to AUM from there, it's dead easy. Obviously, you can hit on any of the AUM icons and it'll take us back. Now here's the key thing. Down here, where it says Mood and Synth Master Player, we want to tap on that there, like this. Sorry, that's wrong. We want to tap on the actual thing where it says Phones, which is my output at the moment, and then choose Inter-App or Audio Bus. So that's either or sort of thing. So 
into App Audio Bus, and you'll see that we've got Cubase has opened as an inter-app audio, and we've already assigned AUM to the first two slots. So all we need to do is choose that one, and that'll do this, and then we'll do exactly the same for this one. Choose inter-app, go to Audio Bus, uh, sorry, go to Cubase's sort of thing, and choose it as number two. So you've got IAA, IAA1 and IAA2. And now if we go to Cubasis and we open our mixer, you'll see that we have it been routed through. So here's the thing. Let's just not do anything else there at the moment, okay? Let's not arm record or do anything at all. Let's just nip back here. If we press this record button now, like this, you'll hear Cubasis counting, but it will not record, okay? But it will count in. Now Cubasis is playing, as you can see here. And if we go back to Cubasis, you will see that the transport bar is tracking along as it should be. We can ignore this because we're not engaged with our, um, what's it, our loop system yet. Okay, we can stop that. And you can see that it's recorded. Now we can skip back to the beginning here, like this. But bearing in mind is when you first click back, it'll go to the end of the loop, even if it's not switched on then click back again to go all the way back to the beginning. If we go back to AUM, you can do exactly the same on this transport here. This is just playing Cubasis now and not recording it. We can pause it at any time and then we can go back to the beginning of Cubasis sort of thing. But to get it to record, we want to record, I particularly want to record just both of those tracks. So we're going to hit this and we're going to hit this. We know the levels are okay. Nothing is overloading or anything like that or clipping and doing the, the wild thing. So that's done like this. Now Cubase, as I know, has a counting of two bars because I've set it up there. But let's turn the metronome on so I have some sort of signature. So what happens is if the metronome is switched off in Cubase, it will count for how many times you set it up, up to four bars. I have set for two. It'll count two times. And then it will it will go quiet, but it'll still be recording. If the metronome is on, you will hear the metronome during the entire recording. Okie dokie. Now, let's go back to AUM. And we've made our adjustments that we want in AUM. We might have applied effects, maybe a great big session, blah, 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 blah. Um, but let's press record. Now, remember, I get a two-bar count in. And now I can start recording. Now, I can stop it in Cubasis, or I can stop it here. Let's stop it here. Okay, let's go back to Cubasis now. And you will see that there we have recorded our two bits and pieces, right? And they're absolutely fine, clip-wise. Let's just make sure that they recorded okay. So we do not need to... We can leave the mixer open. We do not need to have them armed for record or for monitoring now, because we're done with that. We can just go back... Switch our metronome off. Okay, and then you're free to carry on mixing in Cubases or adding stuff in Cubases or chopping it up and doing that session stuff. So that's how you do it. I'll give you one more example before we go. So let's just uh, go to our media. Let's set up a new project template and let's call this AUM, oh, I don't know, Cube. C cube, AUM Cube. Okay, so that's okay. So let's go back to our, we can, let, we, let, we can actually close it because Cubasis will open again. And this time, let's see, we've closed Cubasis. So that's all gone. Let's clear that session completely. Not interested in keeping it. Okay, let's open this. Let's open files. And let's see this one. It says Atomic Syntronic. Okay, so let's open that. So this was a session that was done a long time ago. The only thing that is linked to my Artori, I guess, is this Synthmaster 1, which is doing this beautiful bass. 
and that's what it's going to be playing. Okay, so let's listen to the session quickly. So we have Syntronic. If you are interested in what that patch was, it is Bode Soft Sweep Pad, and it is part of the DCOX instrument. Just in case you want to know, it's a lot. It's it's just a preset sound. Anyway, that has been played by Atom. Okay, and this is what I mean about when you set up your AUM sessions to how you like. Okay, so we might have a session that goes on for ages and ages, but we'll use this as an example and we'll set this up in Cubase as exactly the same so you get an idea. But this is going to be very slightly different. Okay, now you might notice that this was probably done before um, AUM got its update even so that Atom is now sitting on in a slot on its own. Well, normally now Atom would sit in a MIDI channel. That's if like one of these things here like that, you know, and then you'd set Atom up in that. But because this was done ages ago, we can remove that channel. Because this was done ages ago, Atom sits there, but it's exactly the same principle. You'll see that this Syntronic has been routed to this Atom, and this Atom is playing... ...those chords. And you can either put them in by hand or you can have a MIDI keyboard play them in. And then there is an noir doing its own thing there, just going boom, ba -dick 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 -boom, ba -dick -dick -boom, like this. So what I'm going to do is before we do anything else at all, I am going to open up a channel here, audio. And in this one, I'm going to choose into app audio. And it's going to be exactly the same procedure as before. We're going to go to Cubasis like this. But this time, I do not need that piano roll to record into Cubases, there is no point because it's just MIDI playing this. The actual sound is coming from Syntronic, not this at all. So we're turn this down, it's gonna be, it's gonna be still there. So I wanna route channels one, three, and four into Cubases. I don't need to route MIDI channels in there via Interrap Audio. So let's go here, and here's our session, AUMQ, which we set up. So we wanna set up three this time, three, Add audio one, two, three. Add audio channels. I'm going to select this first one now so that we're routing right. Routing mono into app. And again, we'll just scroll down till we find um, what's it called? Uh, AUM. And we'll choose port one. And it'll take us back. But we now know the port one. Now remember, we just want to ignore port two. We want to be going in port three. Okay, so for this second one, I want it to be interapp audio port three. So mono interapp. We'll go down to Chromatica here. We find it. There it is, and I'm going to choose port three. Okay, and then we're going to do the same again and choose port four, where we know Noir is sitting. So this is kind of thing, you, it, it, it can be a bit confusing, but I'll show you a way to get around that. But I want to emphasize the fact that you don't need to be recording MIDI tracks, so port four. Right, now, if we go now to this, what we said, we hit phones here, and we choose into app. Let's choose one. And then we don't need to worry about this because we've ignored it completely. It's not even there in Cubasis now because we've bypassed it. This, three. So it corresponds. Key thing is keep your numbers corresponding. It makes life a lot easier. Is that board your key four? Now let's just have a listen to the thing. And let's check our levels in Cubasis now. And we know we're monitoring. So this is this is our Syntronic, which I'm gonna play now. Snip back on over there, we can stop there. So the same thing again, what we want to do is set up a... Now, but for instance, we don't really need a metronome for this because we have Noir doing it. And if we look at Cubases, my metronome is disabled, but I will still get the pre-roll count for uh, starting the recording. Okay, so there is somewhere... I'm not really sure where it is now. Right. You must make sure... The in 
if you tap on tempo, if you go down to recording mode, that your count is switched on. Okay, so otherwise you'll you'll it'll just start recording. You want the count switched on. Okay, so there you go. Now let's go back again. And this time just let's uh, start this to record. So all we need to do is make sure that's race hand to its zero. And this time we want to be starting the count. Okay, and then as soon as it's actually what I will do. To be fair, and I'll explain why, is I will switch the metronome on because it gives me a better clue because this is going to be slightly different, okay? We need to start AUM for this project because that's running. This will not start AUM. This will only start the recording in Cubasis. So we'll get the two-bar count. The metronome will then just continuously count until we've finished recording, but then I can jump in and press play at any time, so... So Cubasis is now recording. It doesn't need to be synced because we're recording audio, don't forget. And I can now just start to play my thing. Now we can stop. We can stop either Cubases. We can stop it here, or we can stop it in Cubases. Let's stop it here. Let's go back to Cubases now and see what we've got. Now, here, here's what happened there. It didn't record, and it didn't record because I stupidly did not press the arm record. Okay, so it's good to see the mistake. I'll just leave that in. We'll quickly go back and do it. Well, no, I won't do it again because it would have recorded exactly that and it would have recorded the fades as well and everything and you'd have been left with the audio track as it is. So there you go, guys. There is how to set up AUM into Cubasis. A couple of examples there. A couple of things you need to remember. Arm record, that's important. Uh, make sure that you don't need to set up MIDI channels to um, record into interapp obviously because it's not recording any audio it's just recording it's just set it's sending data to syntronic now also like i said you know to keep it organized what we could have done is dragged down on this particular one moved it there and then dragged it down and moved it there and then we could have set it up properly there like that you see so it's 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 still done one three but it now it's we're out of whack with the numbers sort of thing, and it could get confusing if it was a big session. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Please, please consider becoming a patron, or please consider making a one-off donation of a couple of dollars to help support what we do at the Sound Test Room, because we cannot survive without the community help. Okay, so there you go. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Ta-ta.